Adam Kimoza, three years provided to the Westfield Leader at last January 5th, 2017. Notification was sent to the Star Leisure Family Post on the Municipal Public Bulletin Board. <coughs> and by the Office of the Municipal Court informed the public for time and place according to the provisions of the Upper Public Leaving Law, Chapter 231, CL 1975. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, uh, Mr. Renard, do you have a report for Stephen? Uh, everything I have is in executive session tonight, Mayor. Thank you. Ms. Uh, Ariella? I have a report from Mr. Borrello. Oh, thank you. Um, he reports that work on 3rd Avenue should be completed soon and the entire project should be completed in about one month. The borough is awaiting DOT approval for the 2016 project awarded at the last council meeting. I promise you that work should commence right after the current project is completed. That's all for Mr. Borrello's report. Thank you. Uh, on my turn, um, I, you guys got this Memorial Day great Cranford notice on April 7th, but you didn't direct me to RSVP. Should I RSVP? Are you going? Yes? Yes. yes. Okay. And, and the matter is in the mayor's office. Okay, okay. I'll take care of this tomorrow. That's all I have. Thank you. Any unfinished business for the council this evening? Any new business? And a couple of small items. Uh, just a reminder, my uh, schedule has changed. Mayor's Saturday will be this Saturday, May 13th at 11 o'clock at Borough Hall. <clears throat> the annual Garwood Townwide Yard Sale will be held May 20th and 21st, 2017. Residents must pre-register for thir by Thursday, May 18th, 2017 at Borough Hall. A list of the participating households will be available at Borough Hall the morning of the yard sale. On May 1st, a meeting was held on behalf of all the rocks held by our uh, business at liaison, Carol Carney. All is going well as scheduled. Uh, they currently have 70 vendors with the potential of 90 to 100 for the day of the actual event. Uh, there's approximately 150 <coughs> plus empty cars that will be part of the uh, day's activities. On May 25th, the Borough of Garwood will presented two checks from the Union County Freeholder Board. The first will be on behalf of the Senior Focus Grant, Old Americans Month. The second will be on behalf of the 2017 Infrastructure Municipal Grant Award. And just a reminder for the Council that the uh, Council will meet next third, Tuesday, excuse me, for the Students and Government Night. It will be held at 7 o'clock at Borough Hall. 6.30. I stand corrected, 6.30. Thank you. It's too late for them to have another meeting. Oh, okay. <clears throat> That's all I have. We'll move on. Comments or matters for discussion for members of council? Council Ms. Lubin, stop. Yes, thank you, ma'am. Um, as you said, Mayor, we, I am happy to say we are the recipient of a grant from Union County, uh, the Senior Focus Grant. Um, it is a $25,000 award, uh, and this grant is to be used for repairs or rehab of any senior facilities or any equipment. Um, and so we will be taking care of the roof over at our senior facility, which is also our fire department. Um, and then we will be doing a few other different things that we, we have in mind. Um, had a couple of ideas from our senior club members, and so we'll be looking into that. But I'm happy to say it's a non-matching grant, um, so I know that makes everybody happy. <laughs> um, and um, that, that's it, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Any comments? Hearing none. Councilwoman Kukura? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I would like to put forth to the council a club resolutions. Uh, as put forward by our Senate. It's A4666 and A4667. Uh, this will be, there. I do have a sample resolution to get this on the agenda as soon as possible. Whether you agree or not with CO and its implications will be the destruction of New Jersey. We will all be sleeping in bunk beds with our neighbors and living like China if they do not get a handle on this. This is an activist agenda and our legislature is not trying to slow it down or stop it. There have been plenty of Republican bills put forward to the state, and none has ever taken up. I have no clue why there is not a bipartisan bill to address this. But another one has come forth, and that is what this is, I just said. Um, A4667, that would establish an Affordable Housing Obligation Study Commission, comprised of professionals and elected officials to decide what each town's obligation should be, who may be better suitable to make a, make a reasonable affordable housing determinations, as opposed to judges who decide based on numbers. The other one is A4666, which aspires to put a freeze 
on all affordable housing litigation through 2017. The present bills as moving forward could add as many as 1.5 million more units to New Jersey. Where pray tell do they think we're going to put that? They compare a town that is 25 square miles to one like Garwood that is less than a square mile. It's insanity. I also find it amazing that the towns that have signed on to these bills are all from North Jersey. What happened to Central and South Jersey? Towns are running around like chickens with their heads cut off trying to settle these looming builder remedy suits before time runs out. I am sure, I am not sure what the rush is, no clue, but I have a feeling there is a reason because all these towns got on the bad way of settling. I do not like that choice and have never supported it. But this is just one of the many bills that have been put forward that I think we owe it to our town to pass a resolution to support it and get it to our state legislature, ASA state. I hope we can get a unanimous support to get this on the next council agenda and send it to other towns in our, in our county or every other town in the state before we're living in our neighbor yards or in their bedrooms. The insanity which started in 1974 with to right or wrong with proper zoning has turned into a travesty and has gone nuts with heavy-handed government turning our little suburban towns into the big urban cities most left to come here for a quieter life. And that's all for my report, Mayor, but I would like to see something put forward to council yes. at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Does the council support the both resolutions? I'd support that. Thank Absolutely. you. Do we have a consensus? Oh. I was actually going to read the same thing. Oh, okay. Uh, so I 100% support the, uh, the bills okay. brought forth there. Mm -hmm. okay. And the reason they're in North Jersey is because the, uh, the woman in the Senate that brought the bills forth represents that district. Well, how come like South Jersey or Central Jersey is not put She's the only one that's come forward, and that's why her towns have put forth. It just, it just some more. Okay, I'll put that on. What happens? Sure. Uh, thank you. So and then that, yeah. that will be forwarded to the other towns in Union County to see that we pass that. Right. If it passes, we can pass, pass, pass it to. Uh, okay, good. We can so. also pass it to the state. Governor Christie, uh, Lieutenant Governor Tim Baldano, Community Affairs Commissioner Charles Richmond, the President of the New Jersey Senate, Speaker of the Assembly, and members of this district and to the New Jersey Municipality. So we can okay. do something like that. Yeah. Add on the other towns in Union County. Yeah, that's I, 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 that. yeah I think that would be great. Yeah. Maybe yeah. some more people on board on this list, because I bought the list and they are all, all, all North Jersey. Okay. Okay, that's great. Good. Thank yes. you. Yeah. Councilman Lazaro? Uh, nothing for me, Mayor. Thank you. Councilman Pedgezelli? Nothing for me, either. Okay. Councilman Sarno? Yes. Uh, the only thing I want to bring up is this brought to my attention today that um, we will be forced to do a revaluation. Mm -hmm. um, the letter rate uh, reads as such to our tax assessor. It states that on Tuesday, May 2nd, the Union County Board of Taxation passed Resolution 2017-3, ordering the borough Garwood to complete a revaluation effective for the tax year 2020. and closes a copy of the order and form R1-2016, which is to be submitted to the board on a monthly basis until a contract for revaluation is secured and approved by both the board and the director of the divisions of taxations. Obviously, I've been, we talked about this at length two weeks ago. This is something that I think we should not have, should have not have come to this. It should have not come to that. This is something we should have been ahead of and something we should have discussed prior to. Um, it, it's a, so, uh, I don't, as much as I want to say I told you so, I also want to move forward and just get this going. Uh, it's it's a shame we're here, but it is what it is, and we must comply and not risk state aid going forward. The state has said that if you do not do the revaluation, you risk losing state aid, and that's something I don't want to do. Thank you. Any comments? I have a comment. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the matter that I was against it was pretty forthcoming, but I also wasn't against that mandating when we had to do it, which happens to come two weeks after. We just made the statement. So obviously there's things that we have to do first, and one of the things is going to be put forth a new tax map, and we want to make sure that it doesn't expire, because if it's done too soon or done too late, we just have to make sure everything is in sync to get that done properly. I was never against doing it when we had it mandated, but I just didn't see any reason to do it before. Thank you. I would agree with Councilman Kukuro about that. I mean. I certainly never opposed it being done, but there was no advantage to going first or to go sooner than the state mandated. But um, to our tax assessor's surprise as well, it came sooner than she had expected for us um, about a month ago when she came before the council. And as soon as I received the email today, I called yeah. her up actually, had a good conversation. And uh, here she'll be actually faced with uh, working on this for two towns pretty much concurrently. Uh, Westfield is mandated, but uh, they have to do it by 2019, whereas we're 
having to do it by 2020. And so um, essentially she's told me, even though uh, Westfield has already gotten the process of getting the tax maps updated, they still have not budgeted for this. So it's not something that really should have been budgeted for this year. However, um, it is coming down the pike as we see. So that would be um, as far as the tax maps go. I know uh, there was some talk about Union County potentially helping out with that. If that's possible, uh, let's get on that and see what we can do to hopefully ease the, the burden <coughs> here. Although obviously that's GAR with taxpayer dollars too, but trying to get more of it back from Union County is something we always try to do um, for the residents and also um, once the tax maps are up to date, and as Councilwoman Cougar will point out, they don't expire, uh, then you can do an RFP for a firm to conduct the revaluation, and they will have many um, public meetings, which I find really important, and I expect to hold them to that, because this can be a very um, scary and troubling thing for residents to go through. They do have to go to every house and inspect it. Uh, if you don't let them in, or it just doesn't work out, that the timing they might try to come back another time but eventually they just have to label it with a, a new taxation and if um, you disagree with it there is an appeals process and there's an appeals process for anyone uh, that does not agree with the new determination of the property tax and uh, the last thing I wanted to say was our tax assessor um, did agree I asked her if she would be willing to come to a council meeting to answer any questions that we may have as council, but also to answer any public questions at this time. Obviously, it's still a ways to with, with having to get the tax maps up to date and doing the RFP and getting that firm in, but she you know, will do, do the best she can to answer questions. And um, so she might even be here at our next council meeting or in June. She was hoping next one, though. So, and and also, as I stated this. myself, that uh, We'll approach Union County and they did give us the tax map about four or five years ago to make sure they're current mm -hmm. and we will get them digitally also. Charles, what you gave me is not actually the tax map. What is it? It's just a printout of everybody's bottom line. It's not yeah. a tax map. Okay. I'll follow and it does, yeah. it's actually the state's very picky yeah. about how it's you done. Have to hire a firm to do okay. the tax map. Fine. I mean, if the county is going to do it for engineering with a tax map, fine, but. Oh, I'll clarify that. Okay. It's a GSI kind of map they need. Mm -hmm. okay. Also, I wanted to ask one more quick thing. Um, did they guarantee that whoever does the reval that they are going to guarantee the taxes? Because the last thing we want to see is uh, 1,500 people appeal on their taxes. I'm pretty sure that the couple towns I spoke to that, that has done them, and Maplewood had a hard time. Mm -hmm. They gave a really hard time, and um, they had to do it again and they had to pay for it, the town. So if these taxes go up on some properties, is this going to be covered by the uh, rebound company? It really should be. Um, and every town has taken the responsibility. A majority of the towns in the state have taken the responsibility of trying to do this every 10 years. I mean, we have not. Um, to answer your question, yes, they will have to do this over a period of time, whether it's two or three years. This, those specifics can be answered when Ann Switzer comes in, as mentioned by Sarah. Yeah, because I mean, the thing is, as much as I was against it until we were mandated, there could be a lot of good things coming out of this for, for property owners that have done things in there that they shouldn't have done, for people using a one family as a two. So these are all going to come and be above board to actually straighten things out. I think I remember hearing at some meeting that the company defends the, re the appeal for three years or something like that. Okay. Okay. Somebody else remember hearing that at, at um, yes. right, something, somebody said that somewhere. Usually for a period of time, at least one year, that, that's what the contract will provide. Now when you say th they'll defend, that means they'll go to the county board hearings um, to defend the assessments. That doesn't mean that they're going to guarantee that they're going to be um, sustained. Right. Or that you don't lose defense. money on the, you know, on the appeals on the Rebound. Well, I just hope that the market stays the same because basically when the market was in the tank, but that's what all the appeals residential were done, and they all they all won. So yeah, you want them you want to do a rebound when the when the values are relatively stable, and certainly not when they're going down. Right. If they're going yeah. down, then you've got a real problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else before we move on? Yeah. No. Council Walton, Tedesco. Uh, 
No, Mayor, that's all I have. Thanks. Uh, public comment. Is there anyone in the audience who would suggest the mayor and council please step to the microphone? State your full name and address. Please submit your comments in three minutes. Uh, mayor, uh, Jim Matthew, 335 Hazel Avenue. I received uh, in the mail something from the Garwood Democrats uh, pertaining to the athletic field, and I quote, says the athletic field building uh, is closed to investigate a leak in the doorway. So is that done? Is that the only reason that it's closed? <coughs> That's correct. It's the only reason it's not done, as you say. We have an executive session tonight to discuss it. So that whole building is closed to investigate a leak in the doorway. Right? And you want to get in to mm -hmm. that yeah. And that's the only problem for which it's closed, as far as we know, yes. It just seemed kind of strange to me. And how, and how long has it been closed? Yep. And um, do we have an idea about when it's going to be open? Yeah. Uh, well, like I just said, we're going to have an executive session and hopefully we get some more information tonight. <coughs> but as of right now, before the executive session, we have no idea when it's mm -hmm. going to be open. No. And it mentions also in the Garwood Democrats newsletter um, that the field is still being rented out. Um, but obviously the building can't be rented out. Do we have a tally of how much revenue has been lost due to the closure of the building? There's been no loss. It's rented out. We have four jobs there. And the same people that rented it last year are renting it. Same it's rented to full capacity. There's no bail on us or anything. Has anyone been turned away? I don't know. We don't do the scheduling, so I wouldn't be honest. <coughs> I don't do the scheduling of it. I don't do the applications. So who, who does that? The recreation department. But, um, Is there a way we could find out in there? Um, if anyone has gone ahead and asked to rent the building in particular, and if they've been turned away, we can get an idea of any revenue loss if possible. Okay. <coughs> I can find that out. If it Thank is. you. Okay. All right. That would be great. So all this just because, just to recap, all this just because there's a leak in the doorway. We've, it's been closed two months, and mm -hmm. we don't know when it's going to be reopened as of right now. As of right now. That's great. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, Councilman, Councilwomen, and ladies and gentlemen in the audience. Uh, Joe Goldler, 25 Second Avenue. Bringing up some old stuff, but I feel I need to. Second Avenue Speedway. We know down the road it's going to get worse with the development, the wisdom development, more cars on our street. Uh, last Monday, a week ago, yesterday, we had company for dinner, but we hadn't heard of car accident. It was nothing more, nothing more than somebody running over the uh, speed limit sign. Made such a loud noise before somebody got. I jumped out of the dining room, ran outside, so that's so why I said, we've got to take a picture, bring this up. We've got to do something about this. The speeding's getting ridiculous. Uh, Saturday, I was outside washing our cars, and somebody from down the street in the 250 block uh, had a package delivered in Ur to our house. They came to pick it up, and we started chatting. And as we're chatting, this car came flying by, almost sideswiped this woman. And she said, oh my god, this is ridiculous. What's going on here? She said, I'm tired of it. We live down the street, blah, blah, blah. She was, my daughter I killed a few years ago. I said, what? She was yeah, by a speeder. So we really have to start addressing this. And number three, I'm not going to get into it in detail. But uh, back on April the 27th, I was heading <coughs> over to Cranford. And the car came up Winslow Place from North Avenue. Never made a complete stop on Second Avenue. I, if I didn't slow, if I wasn't going slow enough and stop, I would have hit him. There were utility workers working. They ran over. He ran over a cone, started driving down the road. It could have been a kid or an older person that they ran over and were dragging. So I'm blasting the horn, flashing my high beams. It's during the day. This is like you know 12, 40 or so in the afternoon, and the car pulled over toward the right, and I started going toward the left. I was going to stop. When I got near him, like, you know, buddy, what's going on? You're driving this car. And the car swerved over to the left, tried to run me off the road. Well, I did. On my fairly new car, it's only six months old, scraper wheel, found out that new was going to cost me 1100 bucks. You know, it's ridiculous. And then the person, well, it's in writing, I'm going to give it to the chief. 
uh, he flashed his wallet open like he was a police officer or something, and I thought, I'm dealing with a lunatic here. So I just kind of like backed off. And, you know, he said, you know who you're dealing with, this and that, blah, 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 blah. And he pulled out his wallet. And I said, you know who you're dealing with? And he said, no. I said, well, I'm God of Second Avenue. I just kind of like lost it, you know? And then he kind of backed off, and then he said, I guess he figured, you know, I'm dealing with a wacko. He goes, well, I'm going to pick up my son from the apartments over here. But by then, we were in Cranford. I did report this to Garwood Police immediately, Cranford Police, the next day, and I gave them the write-up that I had for our chief. And uh, that's about it. But there's the sign that was knocked over. He's going to have this. Councilman, would you follow up with the chief? Please have me there. Actually, Mayor, if I can add, uh, yes. the Finance Committee is actually going to be uh, reviewing some capital requests made by the new chief, Chief Jim Wright, and um, we'll be meeting in the next couple weeks to discuss that. And this has been a top priority about signage. And um, I agree with you. I noticed the one on. Fourth Avenue getting knocked all the there time as well. Knocked yeah, getting knocked out. And like you said, it could be a person next. So. That's it. It could have been a little kid. You know. This guy was dragging that's cold right. down the street. And he goes, oh, I'm trying to dislodge it. Uh, like, why don't you stop your right. car, get out, and see what the heck you ran over? And right. I mean, it's all in detail in that you know, thing because they were utility right. workers, you know, they were from whatever company it was. Uh, number two, I think we have to address, uh, you know, I mean, we're Garwood. We're not Westfield. We're not Short Hills. But we're a cute little town. It always has been. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of the uh, dwellings that are multiple family and owner unoccupied, the owners don't care. I brought this up in the past. I have another copy of picture today again. The house is uh, on Anchor. It's 115 Anchor. It faces my property. The garage looks, it's pathetic what it looks like, you know? And I think we have to start, form a committee or something. I'm retired. I'll have time. I can do a search. I can ride around my car all day. I don't care. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's uh, 115 Anchor. This you can also have. Was this brought up to the um, code enforcement? It's no, I haven't. I have, I have brought this up in the past, in the past few years, the same dwelling, you know, the garage. And they did put a new garage on and a roof a few years ago. But that's it. The rest of it looks, looks pathetic. There's garbage laying all around, you know. We're if I come over by my house, then I'll be happy to picture it. <laughs> <laughs> Never. I know your house, seriously. So we really need to uh, address <coughs> these issues, I believe. Well, absolutely. I brought, if I may, I brought up yeah. the stuff about the uh, speeding all last year. Yeah. All last year on our side roads. I mean, you know, we met with the new chief, the police uh, committee, and he was very forthcoming about things that can be done, especially on that, I called it the Indy 500 of Holly coming into Garwood, because the road is so smooth and new. Right, they come flying I told you, up. I was speeding, and I didn't even realize it, because that road, road is so smooth. But I mean, we put forth, you know, can we put a stop sign there? He said, I didn't think it'd be a good idea because of the setup. You will correct me if I'm wrong. So there should be something else put there for that section from Holly from Orchard up to Garwood. Right. You know, yeah, something has to be done that's really yeah. Bad. I mean, maybe we put the signs up that are made of steel, but I don't think we're allowed to do that. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Well, the only thing that I had mentioned, I think this was even probably last year, even, you know, probably the year before, ever since you've been coming up. I mean, there's no sign that tells you that you're into Garwood and that the speed limit is 25. As much as it is a residential area, I just think that people really need to be reminded. And, you know, I think a sign is a small thing, but yes. You know, a sign or speed? I mean, I'm not speed really bumps. in favor of speed bumps, but Gallows Hill Road by the Greek Church over there in Westfield, but it's not very, you don't see very many people speeding there. I love the speed bumps. I've been up last year, too. But maybe one. Maybe one. One toward each end. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. Sometimes I'm out here in the yard blowing leaves and stuff, especially in the fall. And if I'm in the street, we talked about speed bumps with the, with the chief. We also, you know, you yeah, chief wanted like he wanted. I know some of the more. negatives, of course, are the you know in terms of plowing and the maintenance of it is, is expensive. But yeah, I mean, you know, I'm all for whatever yeah. it takes. We I don't want to sit out there every day, you know, with a bat and ball and people in the head. But yeah. And then uh, last but not least, this is just something for thought. Because in today's uh, Star Ledger in Jersey Amboy, there was a factory that was knocked down. Uh, Giordano. Ameristeel, if I can pronounce it, get it correctly, I don't know, I apologize. They're going to be building warehousing and green acres. I know a lot of people in town are in favor of this Russo and everything else going on a lot. They're not in favor. 
why don't we think and, uh, and look into maybe taking some of these properties and the Green Acres project, aside from our ball field, a park instead of the South Avenue, on the south side of South Avenue, instead of having 59 more apartments, why don't we have Russo put a nice park for the people that live there and also for the residents of our town? Hartman uh, Park is for kids. It's not for adults. An adult goes there, they get hit by a ball in the head, they get knocked out, and boom. I'll get a few more bodies at the funeral home, you know? <laughs> well, wouldn't we just love if he contributed to the town, donated his property so we can build a big pet park? Really? We'd love that. Really? Yeah. Pet park, uh, pet people park, etc. whatever. That's all I have to say, and that's Thank my brain for tonight. Thank have you. a good night, everybody. Thank you, good night. Hey, Joe, I just have one question for you, Joe. Uh, yes. Joe. Did you get the uh, plate for the guy? You know what? I didn't. Yeah. I didn't, but I'm, I, well, it's a description in the letter of the car. Right? About the car. It was an old, ratty looking car, this and that. Okay. And I have an idea who it is, too. Okay. Mayor, that address that was provided to us, 115 Anchor, if you want to pass that along to the chief. Yes. I know property maintenance. I'll do that by email. Oh, okay. we'll take, all right, thanks, Thank Ms. Ariana. Thank you. Because I know uh, Laws and License is reviewing property maintenance right now, and that was a hold up before about getting our code up to date in order to have this enforcement, but we've had this conversation with the chief, and he has amped up enforcement uh, despite that code. Um, not being the International Property Maintenance Code yet, but it's underway, and I know Councilman Cooper will be reporting on that tonight, too. So, yes, we're on. I'm actually going to thank you for something. It's okay. Uh, South Carolina, 55 4th Avenue, and I just want to read a statement from the Garwood, from the Garwood Board of Ed, um, representing the Garwood Board of Ed. Garwood Board of Education has been concerned regarding the plans for the Casal Petroplastic site. While we agree that a blighted property does not benefit the borough, we have reservations about redevelopment plans. We've heard that 28 to 31 apartments are to be set aside for color. We also heard that we need not worry as the school district would not be significantly impacted. Every additional student will have an impact on the district with regards to class size, staffing needs, and classroom technology, and supplies. Due to our one school district, students with significant disabilities must be placed out of district district to have their educational needs met. That placement could cost taxpayers more than $100,000 per student. The Board of Education is aware that the borough is in early stages of redevelopment plans for the South parking lot and the former Alien site. We are also aware that the borough is in negotiations for pilot terms for the South Metro site. The Board of Education is requesting participation in these negotiations and future negotiations in order to provide a perspective on the educational impact of these plans and not on behalf of the Board of Ed. I just want to thank you for bringing Board of Ed, you know, we brought together a committee to start getting involved with that process. And another uh, thing I just want to add is in the statement it says it could cost taxpayers more than $100,000 per student. Per the state of New Jersey, that cost is actually more than $400,000 per student is what it could cost. Um, Garwood right now, when you include the out-of-district students, each student costs over $19,000 per each one. And that's higher than Cranford and Westfield because we have someone out-of-district. It's just something to consider. And I just want to thank you for bringing that to me. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. 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 I believe so. That was communication from the board? Yes. Every man on behalf of the board. Right. I don't know about anything. Yes. We didn't know. Anyone else? <laughs> <laughs> uh, good evening, Mayor Lombardo, ladies and gentlemen. The council's been discussing at 325 Little Avenue. It is the second time the Board of Ed is reading statements in public, but it sure seems like, I guess, Sal, uh, you're the, the liaison? Uh, um, for tonight, we have a few days. Yeah, actually, this is probably going through you back to him, but I mean, the Board of Ed really should be sending something in writing. Uh, I don't know, Christine, did she well, send you whatever? She, I have communication from her. Okay. She asked if we could put a small a committee together, and I, she wanted to meet with me first, but I suggested that the um, finance chair, council president Desco, 
and the <coughs> council representative to the school board, Councilman Sarn, will be part of that meeting. And our first meeting is uh, May 22nd at 7.30 p.m. in the school board. Okay. Just we never received that form of communication. Just a request for a meeting. Right. Just a request for a meeting. Exactly. It just seemed it, it just seemed not, you know, it's not being sent, you know, as communication. Just, but, uh, okay. Just a couple questions. Uh, the 2017 infrastructure grant, do we know the amount we're getting or did we just submit? We submitted. We just submitted. That's correct. All right. How about the, uh, now that the budget is passed down at Union County, do we know the taxes that Garwood is going to be hit with? Uh, that's the Board of That's the Board of Ed. Don't you know? I think there was. I can't quote the number, but I think it was. I'll, I'll be sure to find out for the yeah. next council meeting. I think that's important to yeah. report on. So. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I, I missed the last meeting, which actually leads me into the, to the next one. Um, Councilman Sarno was talking about a Union County Freeholder Ordinance 2017 3. Resolution. It's a resolution. Yeah, it's from the Union uh, County Board of Taxation. Oh, Board of Taxation. Oh, okay. Okay. And they, when did they pass this? You're saying it, it was up for the time, whatever agenda? Second, but I mean, she didn't receive it until today. I mean, we all and, now it's, today. and now, I guess I'm concerned right now because now it's mandatory that we're facing this revaluation and, and as it you know, and just to lead in, I got, you know my uh, proactive, I'm moving around to the different towns, uh, trying to get some kind of coalition going. Uh, and as I mentioned, the Plainfield uh, CFO mentioned, it really is a mayor's initiative, but I mean, is it? I don't know. You know but it, it's something that obviously all these towns got to get together, the governing body somehow, and form this coalition. And again, uh, you know, I was at the county budget hearing, and I, I did talk to them about their uh, very high level of surplus that they're carrying, and, and I actually asked them what their plans were for that surplus, and as usual, they don't answer me, and later on they throw me out, but that's another issue. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, but they, yes, they are sitting on a lot of money. Uh, it seems the surplus is actually jumping up seven to eight million dollars a year. Uh, they're all offsetting some uh, taxes. Thank you very much for your orders, you know for that, but uh, at the same time, you know, the town's got to get together. Uh, I was away for a week, and so now I'm going to go back on my little, little uh, road show going to different towns. So, but I mean, it really is something that we're all facing, obviously, imminent, you know, by way of that resolution. Yeah, is there, is there any committee, you know, the, the property maintenance and, and the uh, zoning enforcement, uh, Mr. Goldwood came up and he was talking about a, you know, in a, a garage, I guess. But, but is, is there some committee that really does take that and run with the proper uh, parties or entities? As Council President mentioned, the school and the school wasn't licensed. Uh, in part, I would say our committee has been looking at it to review specifically the property maintenance code. But I would say um, through our committee, we did pass along some information residents had shared with Councilwoman Cucaro and myself separately. Um, we passed that along to the chief, and I know he made sure a situation I brought to his attention was taken care of, and I thank him for that. Um, and then Councilman Petrodelli is the uh, police commissioner. So really, all of us can in some way communicate it back to the chief. It happened to be we were talking about it that day as a loss of license, but I mean, probably the most appropriate thing would be for us to funnel it through the police commissioner to let um, the chief know. Yeah, I would reiterate. I mean, basically, we've been <clears throat> working on this for quite a few months already. I mean, when you read the um, 2015, I mean, you have to almost have to be an attorney to decipher all these things. So we're basically all weeding through it, picking out the parts that will be applicable. Um, code enforcement does some things. The chief of the police do another thing. They do other things. So we're trying to get it all cohesive so we know who's going to be handling what, enforcing, and stuff like that. Because there's, there's plenty of issues that can be taken care of, you know, and they're not being taken care of. But like I said, we've been working on it diligently for what, months? Mm -hmm. You know, and we're, we're, we're getting this close 
You know, and the other thing too is that we don't, you know, we don't have a code enforcement officer or a property maintenance enforcement officer. So that's the other thing too. Well, what was we the, have, we do have a the code enforcement? We do. That's yeah. That's yeah. But it doesn't enforce property maintenance. Exactly. It enforces code. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah, that is zoning. But as far as property maintenance, we don't have someone you know who can do that. Other towns do. You know, Cranford has somebody, and uh, I think that's something that maybe should be looked at. I'll look into that. Spending money. I was saying letters for They are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> God bless you. But uh, are the, the enforcement is Lenny, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Zoning. Zoning. Yes. Uh, code enforcement is Lenny. Yeah, I do see him. Yeah, I don't know where. So I, I, I saw him the other day on second. He was looking at RVs in backyards and stuff. But I mean, he's out there. I, I know he, he generates a report. Too. Yes. He generates exactly. a really great report. I guess you're going into executive session tonight. Do uh, you actually have the results of, of whatever the professional was that you hired, you know, some kind of report from him? Is that why you're going into executive session? No. No. We know what the issue is? I mean, or is it premature? I think mean, what issue are you talking about? The rec complex had a water leak. You hired, I forgot who it was. We didn't hire. We, we named the company with the Falcon Group. Yeah. And they withdrew. We hired them, but they withdrew. They will. They withdrew their desire to work just for that project. Is, is it proper if I ask that question? Why they withdrew? Mr. Knott, can you answer, please? Uh, they didn't want to comply with the requirements of the local public contracts law and the um, Treasury regulations, actually, more specifically. Without going into any further, so so you're going into executive session, and maybe another RFP is going to come out. Is that what it is? Mr. I don't know that we're discussing that in executive session. I I, I keep on with it. Okay, I will, I will, I will uh, go on further. I mean, it seems like an issue that came up. And we're starting at square one, but anyway, that's my opinion. Okay, okay. thank you very much. Verify that it is on the list. Right. We're discussing what how to move forward at this point because right. that contract fell through. So basically we're discussing how to move forward. Thank you. Okay. And Thank you. I, I just want to say I know it sounds frustrating. It's frustrating to us when something like that happens that it sets it back. So hopefully soon we can move forward and get everybody the answers that we need. And for the benefit of the public, why is it that we're discussing this in the executive session? Well, I believe confidential litigation. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, we're sharing everything we can with the public. No, 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 no. I, I know it's well, very it frustrating. Is, it's frustrating. Yeah. 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 Everything we can. Yes. I mean, okay. we could say things, and then our attorney will let us know we're out of line and opening the borough to worse problems. So, you know, I, 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 I hate that we can't give anybody more, but as soon as we can, we can. Actually, to clarify one thing, I'm going to request that Christine uh, or that president send you the, uh, the statement. I don't think it's my place to just let it send it. So. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none at this time, do I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? I make that motion second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Should we move on, council? Yes. All rise for a moment of silence and salute the flag, please. According to the provisions of the Open Public Meeting Law, PTL uh, Chapter 231, PL 1975, roll call, Ms. Ariana. Mayor Lombardo. Here. Councilman Blumenstock. Here. Councilman Cooper. Here. Councilman Lazaro. Here. Councilman Petrozelli. Here. Councilman Sardo. Here. And Council President Tedisco. Here. Ms. Ariana, minutes. Regular workshop and executive, executive session minutes of Mayor and Council held on April 25th, 2017. I have a motion to accept minutes as presented. So moved, Mayor. Second. 
in favor? Aye. Aye. Sarayama Communications. New Jersey City Municipality. Receiving five. Ordinance introduction. Ms. Sarayama, please read 17-06 by title only, please. Yes, Mayor. <clears throat> Ordinance of the Borough Council of the Borough of Garwood, County of Union, New Jersey, adopting the South Avenue Transit-Oriented Redevelopment Plan pursuant to the Local Redevelopment and Housing Law, NJSA 48. Home 12A-1. We have a motion. I'll make that motion. Second. Roll call, Ms. Arias. Councilman Blumenstock. Aye. Councilman Bucaro. No. Councilman Lazaro. Aye. Councilman Petrozelli. Aye. Councilman Sarno. Aye. Councilman President Tedisco. Aye. Thank you. Council of Standing Committee reports and other reports. Police, Councilman Petrozelli. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, first off, congratulations to Lieutenant Rocco. Uh, Lieutenant Rocco is receiving the Volunteer of the Year Award presented by the Governor's Council on Drug and Alcohol Abuse tonight at the Alvin Hill Inn. Lieutenant Rocco is being honored for his tireless dedication to the citizens of our community through his volunteer work on the Garwood Abuse Law Alliance. Um, the May 8, 2017 Click It or Ticket mobilization will play a critical role in the effort to keep people safe in our nation's roads and highways. From May 22nd through to June 4th, 2017, law enforcement agencies in New Jersey and nationwide will conduct a click it or ticket campaigns that incorporate zero tolerance enforcement of safety uh, belt laws. Uh, the Guard Police Department will continue to support this initiative with the safety belt checkpoints throughout the borough, so please drive safely. Our police department is seeking fleet, uh, people interested in being a crossing guard. If you or someone you know is interested in a position as an alternate, please fill out an application with the chief of police. Uh, local ordinance 7-2 states, no hawkers, peddlers, canvassers, solicitors, or distributors of advertising shall conduct business within the borough of Garwood without a municipal license. So if you feel that a solicitor is not licensed or is acting suspicious, please call the police, depart uh, the police department so that we can follow up and thank you. <coughs> On Wednesday, May 3rd, we celebrate another successful uh, year of DARE instruction with the graduation of our fifth grade students of Lincoln School. Congratulations to all the students that participated and thank you again to Lieutenant Rocco, Barbara Tweedle, Dr. Goodley, uh, Principal Emmons, and the faculty of Lincoln School for their hard work and dedication to the program. That's all for my report, Mayor. Thank you. Any comments on the police report? I do have a question. Um, has the chief been, has he made any headway with the um, turn traffic signals on South Avenue, et cetera? I know we had to touch base with the county. Yeah, as, as far as I know, it's it's still with the county. So. Okay, so we have no clue when they'll, yeah. now or never. Okay. Not yet. It's okay. okay? All right, thank you. Public Health, Councilwoman Kukuro. Uh, no report, Mayor. We have our next meeting uh, in June. Thank you. Streets and Roads, Councilwoman Bluenstein. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, in addition to regular garbage pickup, the DPW is mowing, trimming, and maintaining all municipal-owned properties and parks on a weekly basis. Uh, they perform sweet, street sweeping operations in various areas throughout the north side of the borough and blew off and cleaned the municipal parking lots on Center Street and the train station lot. Uh, they also put up our Garwood Rocks banners along Center Street and began to weed all of the mulch beds at the sports and recreation complex. They also removed the debris from the roadside pots within the right-of-way areas and began to plant the spring flowers. Uh, also, in the consent agenda, you'll see resolution 17-111 and resolution 17-112 uh, authorizing the purchase of our new garbage truck. The proposal purchases the cab and the packer with two separate transactions. Uh, the cab and the chassis are priced at $113,676.03. And the load body or packer is priced at $69,572.50. Uh, all for a total of a little over $183,000. Uh, I'm very glad that our DPW will shortly be getting this much needed truck and I look forward to seeing it when it's on the road, when it comes in. Uh, that's all for my report, Mayor. Thank you. Any comments on the streets and roads report? Do we know when, how much we'll get for the old truck? Um, 
You know what? I, I know I was given that, and I don't have it. I'll, I'll okay. get it. Okay. Okay. It's a public auction, and I will go. determine okay. the value of it. Yeah. You and will? I have a minimum mm -hmm. when I have a public auction. The last time we sold a garbage truck, I had to have two public auctions because nobody wanted it. So I'll do my best. But it's I not have, much. I, I anybody in here want to buy a garbage truck? I mean, maybe we can take this. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as the yeah, police yeah. buy their new cars, they'll have a couple of Okay. I like that this one. After that, we'll go to fire, council, and sign up. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, we had uh, 18 incidents, uh, 11 day calls, 7 night calls in terms of activities for the month of April. Um, six mutual aid uh, calls, three of which were in Hillside for a total of 36 hours, so the majority of the time was spent there. Uh, they had a meeting uh, this month or last month, 12 men, 18 hours. Uh, certain drills, ropes, knots, fastening, voicing, handheld tools and equipment, use of safety lines for personal rescues that required 20 men in 50 hours. Spring general cleanup, uh, wash and polish, they were out there on Sunday. Uh, refurbish all ancillary equipment, clean apparatus area and wash the floor. We've been doing a little more work. Uh, extra duty for the uh, parade and for the Girl Scouts, three men, uh, one hour, three hours respectively. Thank you, Councilman. Any uh, comments on the fire report? Here is none. Finance, Council President Tedesco. Uh, no report, Mayor. Looking forward to meeting soon, though. Thank you. Movers and grounds, Councilman Lazaro. Thank you, Mayor. Just a very brief uh, update in tonight's consent agenda. We're voting to award a contract to Griffith Painting under Resolution 17-108 for painting of our clock and decorative lampposts. This money was encumbered in last year's buildings and grounds budget, and this contract will ensure that we continue to keep our downtown pristine and well maintained. And that's all for my report. Thank you. Any comments on the buildings and grounds report? Here are none. Laws and License, Councilwoman Cooper. Thank you, Mayor. The Laws and License Committee had an extremely productive meeting last week. The group had to discuss items mentioned at the last council meeting and are happy to provide information on those subjects as well as others. Questions that were asked Can the borough force the agencies to pave or re perform repairs to street openings as directed by borough officials. The regulation is in Chapter 146 and is sufficient, however, control and enforcement need to be addressed. Does the code provide a moratorium for recently paved streets? Chapter 146 has a five-year rule that doesn't allow for street openings prior unless it is an emergency condition. Also, there are provisions in Chapter 146 that provide the method and specification that repairs and restoration must comply with. Again, we must have more oversight and monitoring. Can the borough increase the bond for road work or restoration being performed by outside agencies? Chapter 146 has a provision to increase bond amounts dependent on the type of project at the discretion of the borough engineer. There is also the proper filling requirements mandated by the borough and subsequent inspections prior to the release of bonds. Regulation procedure and monitoring needs to be improved. The administration will be working on that over the next several months. The committee is reviewing the sign ordinance matter, which has been languishing for too long. The committee hopes to bring closure to that matter in the next few weeks and subsequently have a recommendation for full counsel. The committee is also working on Chapter 67 and the relationship to property maintenance code and enforcement. This has been a long pending matter. It is a bit more complicated because we are trying to break down the 2015 International Property Maintenance Code to be included into the borough code. The committee is reviewing the matter and will have a recommendation for full council soon. The property maintenance code must be amended to ensure proper enforcement of properties in this borough. Towing fees were also reviewed with Chief Wright to ensure borrowing is in line with other towns to implement proper fees. We'll be passing along documentation to council for future discussion. Also, which I think is really, really important, the committee discussed amending Ordinance 1403 which prohibits six-foot fencing on corner properties. The committee agrees to amend this ordinance and brings the matter to full council for consideration. The committee proposes that landowners would obviously still have to adhere to required setbacks as set forth in the code. However, not be restricted to four-foot or material use, which should be up to the owner, as long as there is no barbed wire fencing. Our old council can determine proper legal language. We're hoping that an ordinance can be drafted to get this on the agenda for next council meeting which I'm hoping Mr. Renaud and Tina, we can get rolling on that at the next meeting. Can I get that report so that I know exactly what it is that you want to do? Yeah, I have it's a, a recent defense ordinance that was passed on maybe in 20... I have it, 2014. I yeah, I, got to, I have to tell you I'm confused only because we've, you know, we've 
gotten back and forth. It was passed in 2014. And I, at this point, I, I'm not sure that I can recall what we okay. passed and what we repealed. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll get it to you. Six foot fences were um, disallowed on corner properties. I have a paper copy have, I marked up, so I'll place. give this to Mr. Okay. I don't mind. Okay. No, just on corner properties. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I am. Thank you. Any comments on the laws of license? Yeah, for the uh, sign ordinance. What specifically is changing with that? Uh, there were some of the tent signs. So basically, we're going by the old um, ordinance, which Sarah and I will walk around again and look at the ones and with our little notes with us. So pretty much, it was pretty standard. We read over the whole ordinance. So we're just going to revise it a little bit. What, were you revising the size of the sign? Were you we, the basic concern was the size of signs. That was it. And property maintenance, I mean, what specifically would this enable the borough to do in terms of uh, enforcing the property? Well, basically, we have to have the proper people of what's allocated to whom. The police department already enforces some of the property maintenance, but we haven't been able to get in sync with um, the new 2015 um, code. So basically, there's a conflict there. So basically, the police department does some, code enforcement does others. And basically, this building, building, for, building department, yeah. And basically, this you know, this change with this will basically implement exactly who's got to do what. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. The only thing I was going to say is that it should be outlined prior to uh, coming to the council meeting, like what specifically is changing. You know, you know, you know, whether you have to go to the Bob or what have you, like what what will change because of this. And I know I've read over the uh, the international regulations, but I want to see. Exactly what changes for the benefit of the public. Well, ba myself. well, basically, we haven't finished it yet. We're still going okay. over the code maintenance, so that's where. For when we're you do finish. Yeah, well, we will. We'll okay. put forth exactly what the changes will be, and then everybody can have a discussion <coughs> that before the full council, because we would never. Just something to, to also consider, you know, um, is for your property um, your maintenance codes, um, just to make sure if we're changing it, whatever the changes are happening, will those changes require? different levels of enforcement. Will this require, in other words, do we have the current manpower in the police department to be able to handle that kind of duty? And I guess obviously that's a conversation with the chief. Yeah, well, I, I, obviously we don't. You know, so that's what we're going to do. Because I don't know, to, you know, obviously, you know, I, I would sort of support the idea of if it works, but if, obviously if it's requiring us to have to consider hiring, that obviously makes it a little bit of a more dicey uh, decision. Well, the thing is, you know, property maintenance ordinance has been spoken about for quite a long time. And basically, if you don't enforce it and have the people to do it, it just, you know, it makes the town deteriorate. I mean, sure. So, I mean, whether it's peeling paint or the things that we really have control over, which was, you know, chapter three, I mean, a lot of the other stuff was interior matters. And I, I, we don't plan on going inside anybody's well, house. Well, maybe when you pr present those yeah. changes, that you could also, you know, present your recommendations as to what level of enforcement or what additional level of enforcement will be needed to be able to enforce those. We, we absolutely will. Like I said, we're just letting you know that we've been working on it steadfastly, and we're trying to get to the point where mm -hmm. we can present something to the whole council that will have the complete information. Thank you. Did you want to add anything else to that? No, I think that was well said. <laughs> It's Thank a lot, but we're taking it step by step, which is number one, get the code up to date, and then number two is we have a certain level of enforcement now, and Chief Wright has been very um, proactive with the specific situation we presented to him, and then from there, it's about a long-term plan for enforcement. Yeah, because quite frankly, when you read through this code, I mean, my eyeballs roll on the top of my head, so I believe it's, you know, we can try. Yes, you can. Thank you. Recreation, Councilman Pechazelli. No report, Mayor. Uh, meeting is next Monday. Thank you. Garwood Senior Citizen Liaison, Councilwoman Blumenstock. Thank you, Mayor. Um, at our last club meeting on May 4th, we had a visitor from the Senior Citizens Council of Union County. Uh, she wanted to get the word out to our seniors about an upcoming program on Wednesday, May 17th. Uh, the Senior Council is having a presentation called Looking Forward, Money and Technology for Living Better Longer. Um, it's a free program being held at the Westwood here in Garwood from 9 to 11.45.
and we'll discuss, among other things, financial options as you grow older, reducing health care costs, uh, making the most of your cell phone, and driving safer and longer. Uh, you can contact the Union County Senior Council for more info, or I can get you some more information as well. Um, also, the Senior Club is organizing a trip to Atlantic City in June, so if anybody's interested, please let me know, and I can get you in touch with the trip coordinator. Our next meeting is Thursday, May 18th, and that's all for my report, ma'am. Thank you, Councilman. Any comments on the uh, Senior Citizen Aid Report? Hearing none. The Library Mayor's Representative, Councilman Lazaro. Thank you, Mayor. On May 12th, the fourth grade Girl Scout troop will be sleeping over at the library. And uh, also on May 17th, the author of Love Changes Everything will be a guest reader at Storytime. Also, um, the library wanted to invite everybody here um, to the Libraries of Union County Consortium Legislative Breakfast on May 19th from 8 a.m. to 10, 10 a.m. at the Cranford Community Center. If uh, anyone would like to attend, um, there's an email address that's there. Obviously, I know it's weekday, and let's, let's work. I already, um, I already responded. Oh, you responded. OK, great. Yeah, I, I will not be able to attend, but if anyone is interested, let me know. Um, that's from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. at the Cranford Community Center. And just a reminder of ongoing programs include the Knitting Club every Monday and Thursday at 10.30 a.m., Book Clubs Monday afternoon and Thursday evening, Bilingual Knitting Class every Tuesday at noon, Kids Craft Tuesday, May 9th at 3 p.m., Adult Craft Tuesday, May 16th at 6 p.m., Storytime every Wednesday at 10.30 a.m., Adult Chess Club every Wednesday at 7 p.m., Lego Club Thursday, May 11th and May 25th at 3 p.m., Movie time every Friday at 10 a.m. And of course, Garwood Library is open Monday through Thursday from 9 to 8 p.m., Fridays from 9 to 4.30, and Saturdays from 9 to 1 p.m. That's all for my report. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Any uh, comments on the mayor's representative report? Here we go. School Board Liaison, Councilman Sonny. Thanks, Mayor. Board of Education met Tuesday, May 2nd, and approved this official budget of $9.1 million for the 2017-2018 school year. The local tax level will be increased by $143,000 for the coming year's budget and home assessed at $100,000 would pay a total school tax of $4,338, an increase of $66. There will be a meeting between the members of the Board of Ed and as previously mentioned, Mayor Lombardo, Councilman Fadisco, and myself on May 22nd at 7.30 to discuss redevelopment in the borough and how it affects both Governing values. That's all from my report. Thank you. No comments on the report? Celebrations of public events and holidays. Ladies on Council President Dzeska. Thanks, Mayor. I'd like to remind everyone to mark their calendars for the annual Memorial Day event, which will take place, of course, on Memorial Day at noon at the Columbian Club in town. After a short remembrance ceremony, hot dogs, chips, and soda will be served. This year's speaker, I'm proud to announce, will be longtime Garwood resident Gene Payne. Gene Payne is a uh, U.S. Navy veteran of World War II, and he'll be speaking that day. So uh, thanks to the mayor for arranging the speaker and providing the committee with a bio, and I'll be happy to share more about Mr. Payne in um, coming meetings. And that's all for my report, Mayor. Thank you. Any comments on the celebrations? Can you, you share that date? Yes. Maybe email it to maybe email it. Memorial. It's Memorial Day. 29th. What day is I'll that? email it. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's Monday. Okay. Right after you march in the parade. Parade. <laughs> 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 any, any further comments on the celebrations report? Hearing none, you and County Air Traffic Noise Advisory Board Representative Councilwoman Blumenstock. And no report, ma'am. Thank you. Administrative Review Committee Councilwoman Cooper. Oh, thank, thank you, Mayor. Um, I don't want to be losing my report. Well, some nice things. There it is. Uh, let you know if you were hoping. No, I was, hoping no, I, was no, I was I was worried for you. I thought you were very attentive. Last year, the Administrative Review Committee began discussions where services can be improved while reducing costs and bringing additional revenue to the borough. There are a few areas the committee has reviewed, and tonight we'll be bringing one of those ideas to full council and executive session. It includes areas of contract negotiations and attorney-client privilege matters. Therefore, I cannot disclose more in this report at this time. However, when council makes determination on these matters, 
I will report information to the public. And that's all for my report, Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Local Committee, Council President Desco. Uh, no report, Mayor. Parking Committee, Council Sarno. <laughs> no official report, but we are meeting uh, May 18th at 730. Here's official. Sarah Ann, what this reports? Zoning Code Enforcement Officer Lendy Sabrano, monthly report for April 2017. Do I have a motion to accept the officer's report? That's the. So moved, Mayor. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, we have the consent is withheld. Public comment. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to address the mayor and council? Please step to the microphone, state your full name and address. Please leave your comments in three minutes. Concerns and um, have progress moving forward, hopefully, within the next couple of weeks. And I'd like to thank Councilwoman Kukuro also for her thoughts on getting things looked into after work and <coughs> during work being done. I appreciate that also. And a little note for the athletic field complex under Leaky Door. Um, as being a contractor myself, if you have a leaky door problem, the manufacturer also has a representative that can come out and take a look at it to see if it was installed properly or if it's a problem with the manufacturing of the product. There it's at. And I'm also looking forward to the farm check. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Patterson? Just one um, Is there any other thing to say anything about yeah. that? Um, no. Door man, sorry. No. Okay. Uh, good evening, Mayor Lombardo, ladies and gentlemen of uh, Council of Bruce Patterson 325, Willow Avenue. Uh, no, no, the consent agenda. Actually, I, normally I may have a question, but it looks like a whole bunch of them uh, I'd like to comment on uh, before you vote. Uh, resolution 17 104. That's, that's supporting the uh, Community Development Block Grant Program, and I know you talked about it at the other meeting, and, and I would like to hear actually unanimity in, in the vote. Uh, this actually serves all, all 50 states, or is there 57 as a promise? But uh, all 50 states, and, and it, it's great that there's actually a list here, if everybody can read I'm not going to read it, but, but it, it kind of gives you an idea of what the CED grants are for. And, mm -hmm. This is very important for all the states, not only just Carver, but for everyone. And uh, by the way, I was up at New Providence Council, and they're going to be passing a, a resolution to support also. So I'd like to see this unanimously passed. Uh, resolution 17106. Oh, yeah, this one is $9,000 uh, for the furnishing of municipal ambulance service and first aid treatment. I don't recall really seeing this, but I'm just wondering uh, why it's not here. Um, what, it's an agreement with you with the first aid, but we've been doing since the 50s. It, yeah. And we, we have an agreement with them to provide these services, and that's the term and condition of the agreement. Is this like a housekeeping thing? Been done, you no. might have missed one year because of um, failures to didn't respond to the time of the agreement, but other than that, Joe, can you comment on one year we do the agreement, yeah. correct? So they One year, they, they, they never sent it back. They never sent it back. Yeah, that may have been the case. But then you got involved and they had done. Yeah. So. Um, what you're saying, it's an, it's an annual resolution. No, it's going on for. Uh, uh, this is the $9,000 that goes towards the, um, the insurance for the end. For the ambulance squad, and I know it pays nine thousand of the annual cost of fifteen thousand, and I know that everyone probably got their uh, 
fun drive in the mail. So let's keep rocking. Doing well with that. So thank you. Mr. Patterson, that's a line item in the budget, that $9,000 sign. Okay. Just, I don't recall. Uh, 17107, um, it's uh, the Union, Union County is given uh, our history grants, and Garwood is receiving $250. I would like to thank uh, my, uh, I'm, I'm the president of the <coughs> committee, and it's just uh, Carol Lombardo is the one who filled out the paperwork, so I want to thank her for her efforts. And I also thank Union County, the Olders, for their generosity. And I'll actually mention that to them also. 17-108, uh, and this is an interesting one. The, the decorative light pole and clock painting, $5,300. That sounds like a lot of money. Um, I, I, I guess what I'm going to put forth here is possibly not voting on this, tabling it, and maybe try to develop a, a bunch of residents to get together, unless it's some special paint, maybe. But I'll tell you, I've driven by and I've looked at that clock and, and I've said, geez, why can't I just go out, out there and paint it myself? Um, and maybe others, I'm sure, would be glad to volunteer. But why is it so much? I mean, is it, is it a special paint? Is there repairs that have to be done? Is there a written spec on that? It, if it's anything like our light post, I would say yes, because there's a specific paint that has to be uh, used. It's a, it takes special technique. I believe it's Sherman Williams paint, but when I looked into it, it would be light post. So it, it, there is a technique to do that. So we can't have private citizens um, do it? Um, I've actually spoken to our superintendent of public works about it, and it's something that there was um, an original quote from the manufacturer of the clock to paint it. Um, it was my understanding about five years ago that that would be the only person that would be qualified to paint it, and it was upwards of $8,000 to do just the clock. Um, it is specialty paint. It comes from the manufacturer, uh, so it is more expensive than the average paint job. Uh, so this quote includes money for the light poles as well, and it's still less than the original quote from the manufacturer. So. All right, so I guess we'll I, be putting volunteers to work on other projects. I'm, right? I'm sure there's always work out there. Uh, okay, we also want to talk about the labor involved. I mean, the, the type of labor it is. Um, I know that this has been discussed. It's using fine tooth, I mean, you know, almost like toothbrush type thing, but just fine paintbrushes to really go through and um, get all the letters the right way. And it really is going to require a little bit of work. So the more labor is probably being baked into that price, in addition to the higher cost of the paint that has to be done that way. And you look at all, those, all the towns in Union County uh, that have that kind of cost, so I think they go through the same thing. Uh, I, just, I, I always look forward to uh, community involvement. And if I may, we may volunteer for our new green team. That's mm -hmm. multiple projects in the process right now. Oddly enough, that's actually, I was going to ask you about that. That was on my list of uh, items, the green team stats, but let me see if I have any. Oh, yeah, I do have a couple of them. Uh, resolution number 17-111 and 112, that's the garbage truck, a total of $183,000. It's just like, are these standard numbers? Uh, it was not, nothing special that you had to go, like, call take, call take. No, they're not standard numbers. They're state contracts. They're not state contracts. They're a co-op contract that we have to still get a proposal from them, so they still have a proposal for a specific piece of equipment under we don't have to bid. Yeah, I understand, but I'm just saying if anybody else wants to buy a garbage truck, it's $183,000 also. Who's anybody else? Well, the towns that you want to go through the yes. uh, co-op. Yes. The co -op. So it's more or less standard price. Yes. It's a bid price. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Vanwood actually has private hall. But, uh, all right, I guess the question here, is, and I, I know uh, Councilman Benjamin was, was on the committee, but what was the cost of the garbage truck the last time? The last one we bought? Recall? I was on the committee last time? Yeah, yeah. I, remember, I remember. The last time we bought a truck here, Councilman Lincoln was here, and I was, and I was not on that committee. Were you on that committee? I can look it up. No, I was just wondering if, because uh, it's it true, that it seems like it's about the same number. It does seem like it's Yeah. Oh, and yeah, just a, just a little stats update. Thank you. No problem. Would you like me to handle that there? Sure. Um, 
our green team is going really well. We actually had a nice article uh, about our last meeting um, in the leader. It was, uh, we met and divided up into committees, um, and each committee is now sort of going ahead on their own and meeting on their own dates to decide what, and they're separated into different projects. Um, a shop, there, there's a shop local, um, type committee, there is an outreach committee, um, which is to get the word out about environmental causes in the, in the town. Um, I am personally um, a liaison for the beautification committee, which um, is a group of volunteers who will be going around the town doing things like cleaning um, areas that need cleaning, planting flowers. We actually have a meeting with the DPW superintendent next week to sort of figure out what areas um, we're going to attack first. Um, uh, so it, it is going well. It is going well. So right now, it's we're, we're sort of separating out. We had one big, large group, and now everybody's sort of going into where their interests lie, and we'll be meeting separately. Thank you. I love that. Anyone else like to come to the microphone at this time? We want the Consent agenda. <coughs> I have a motion to accept the consent agenda as posted. May I make an amendment to the consent agenda? Okay. Please pull resolution 17-104. Okay, we have a motion to accept the amended consent agenda. So moved. Second. Roll call, Ms. Ariane. Councilman Blumenthal. Aye. Councilman Cooper. Yes. Councilman Lazaro. Aye. Councilman Pesciselli. Aye. Councilman Garno. Aye. Councilman President Disco. Aye. Do you have a motion to adopt resolution 17-114? Uh, so move, Mayor. That's for 104. 104. Oh, 104. Sorry, 104. So move, Mayor. Second. Roll call, Ms. Ariane. Awesome. Just for the discussion, I'm not supporting this. Um, because I feel that there is a rate of waste in the uh, community development, development block grants. Um, when you have $250,000 going from the county to Broadway for low-income artists, I don't believe that that's the most effective way to provide <coughs> for low-income housing. Um, we are, we tackle this sort of, for, uh, on a town-by-town -town basis. I think we do a pretty good job with it. Um, for the rampant waste that does go on, um, I can't support this resolution. Thank you. Roll call, Ms. Ariamma. Councilman Blumenstock? Aye. Councilman Kukuro? No. Councilman Lazaro? Aye. Councilman Petrozelli? Aye. Councilman Sarno? No. And Council President Disco? Aye. We're not in new business proclamation. National Police Week, May 14th to May 20th. Peace Officer Memorial Day, May 15th. Sorry, I'm a payment of claims. We resolve the following claims as. at as approved B in the same on payroll order came when properly signed and verified in the payment of payrolls. As was the I confirmed and ratified. We have a motion for payment of claims. So moved, Mayor. Second. Second. Roll call, Ms. Ariane. Councilwoman Blumenstein. Aye. Councilwoman Kukoro. Yes. Councilman mm -hmm. Lazaro. Aye. Councilman Petrozelli. Aye. Councilman Sarno. Aye. Council President Disco. Aye. Ms. Ariane, resolution for the executive session. Okay, resolution 17. 113 closed session resolution authorizing the executive session for the purpose of discussing one contract negotiation related to a deed restriction on property known as 54 Willow Avenue, 55 South Avenue. Two, contract negotiation related to shared services for construction code enforcement. Three, personnel matter appointment of municipal engineer. Four, water infiltration at the Mike R. Coley Recreation Building at the Garbage Water Recreation Complex and Manager trying to find privilege. The name of the above and in accordance with NJSA 10 protocol is just a meeting held to the public. Disclosure of public checkers will matter, whereas it is necessary for the mayor and council to go to conduct an executive session for the public and discuss the above and in matters. Now they have to be resolved with the council and the borough of Garber hereby move towards the executive session in accordance with the provision of the Open Public Meetings Act for the purpose of discussing the subject stated above and be a further result of the matter discussed in the minutes of the closed session shall be released, shall be disclosed to the public. When the recent conference rally no longer exists. Roll call, please. Any motion in second, sir? No action will be taken, by the way. Okay. So moved. Second. Roll call, please, Sarah. Councilman Blumenstock. Aye. Councilman Cooper. Yes. Councilman Lazaro. Aye. Councilman Bernardo. Aye. Councilman President Disco. Aye. 